Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tanika and today I just wanted to do a casual get ready with me and talk about de-influencing and the beauty community. Now, what got me interested in this topic was watching one of Robert Walsh's latest videos called All Influencers Are Liars. And he discussed a lot of unpopular opinions within the beauty community. And it was really interesting to listen to his thoughts and also read through the comments. Now, from my understanding, de-influencing is meant to be about consuming less. You don't need to buy everything the internet tells you to buy just because it's amazing. <laughs> it's kind of like the old anti-haul trend, don't you reckon? Which, by the way, I'm still here for because I love hearing people's opinions on new makeup and why they're not going to buy it. But I think one of the reasons people have a problem with the term de-influencing is because it's become more of a buy this, not that trend instead of you don't need to consume everything you see trend. Like, let's be real, we definitely consume too much. We consume so much. I am guilty of it too. I love seeing what new makeup releases are out there. Oh my God, that's trending, do I need it? But I think where the problem lies here is that people aren't being smart consumers. I personally like the kind of de-influencing videos where they talk about a new product and maybe show something in their collection they already have and that's why they don't need the new product because it's very similar. You know, it's saying I don't need to go out like rush and buy this hot new product because I've got five similar products sitting right in front of me. Which I know I could definitely do more of as well because do I really need a new cream blush when I've got 10 sitting in my drawer? Probably not. But sometimes you just get so influenced and caught up in the hype that you want it. So when it comes to being a smart consumer, I think it's important to do your research. TikTok is such a fast paced form of content. How can you really trust a review on a product that you've only watched something that goes for less than three minutes about? I feel like instead of watching multiple videos, doing your own research, actually looking at the product description and if it's going to be suitable for you and your skin type, people rush into buying these things and then they blame the influencer for being a liar when it doesn't work for their skin type. Now don't get me wrong, I'm sure there are some influ influencers. <laughs> I'm sure there are some influencers out there lying about products. But again, what can you do about that? You can't control that. What you can control is the research that you do before you spend your hard earned money on that product. I feel like a good example and something that is super relevant for me right now is baby stuff. I am 33 weeks pregnant and TikTok is just full of baby stuff that I need, things you must have for a newborn, like just all this shit that I could definitely easily be influenced by because I've never had a newborn before. I don't know what I need. TikTok's telling me I need that. It's really important. It will save my life when I have a fresh newborn, but I don't have the kind of money to just be dropping on everything I see that is raved about on TikTok. So I really have to do my research on that particular product. Think about if it's something I and my husband would actually use you know, ask my mum who's had six kids, ask my sister who's had six, no, she's had two kids, ask my friends who have had kids, do my own research before I go in and impulse buy all these things that TikTok has said I need for my new baby. I always look so washed out when I do my foundation. <laughs> Let's turn the brightness down a bit. So as well as being a smart consumer and doing your research, I think it also comes down to watching people that you really trust. I feel like that's something that's really hard on TikTok as well because you're not having the same interactions with the content creator that you are on YouTube. I don't feel like I make the same connection with someone who I've only watched a few 30 second to three minute videos of 
over people who I've watched 20 to 40 minute videos of like over and over again. As a content creator myself, I can't tell you how happy it makes me when I know a follower, a subscriber trusts my opinion. When I get a comment saying, I bought this product off your recommendation and I love it, it works great for me, I am absolutely ecstatic. It just makes me so thankful that you trust me and my opinion to go out and spend your hard earned money on a product. And even when you do that, I hope that you do your own research and make sure that it is going to work for you and your skin type as well. I always like to comment back saying something along the lines of like, thank you so much for you know trusting my recommendations and I really hope you love it as much as me because at the end of the day, we might have different skin types. A product may perform differently on my skin compared to your skin. So I really hope that you love it as much as me because you trusted my recommendation. I would say one of the influencers or content creators that I trust the most and probably buy products recommended of her opinion the most is Jessica Braun. I love that she loves drugstore makeup. She compares it to a lot of high-end makeup and I've been watching her for years. I think she's super genuine and if she raves about a product, if I've heard her rave about it a fair few times and I think that it's something that I would enjoy, I will go ahead and purchase that product. And most of the time I have really enjoyed her recommendations. But if I don't enjoy her recommendations, I don't go, oh my God, she's a liar. I don't trust her anymore. I just understand that maybe that doesn't work as well for my skin type or how I want to wear the product. I just feel like TikTok has really made a huge change in the way people consume products and trust influencers. As I said before, I find it so much harder to form that connection and trust with a content creator when I'm only watching short videos of them all the time. I'll go into trust a little bit more in a sec, but I just quickly want to talk about the differences with long form and short form content. As much as I enjoy TikTok and I think it's got its time and its place, I don't know about you guys, but my feed lately most of the content is informative. And when I'm watching TikTok, most of the time, I just want to zone out and be entertained. You know, show me a funny video, show me a trend, show me something silly. Everything on my For You page at the moment, no matter whether it's makeup related or baby related, it's, it's just informative. And I was like, you can only take on so much information before you burn out. Like I just can't handle it anymore. And that is one of the reasons why I still love long form content on YouTube because I love to watch a video while I'm doing my makeup, getting ready for work in the morning or while I'm eating my breakfast or cleaning the house. Like I love watching good old fashioned long form content. It kind of annoys me a little bit how YouTube has introduced shorts as well. Like I understand that they want to get on board with the short form content, but it just clogs up my subscription feed. And to be honest, I don't watch people's shorts on YouTube. I have uploaded one, but I'm not sure whether to keep uploading them because YouTube wants me to, or because my viewers want me to. Do you guys watch YouTube shorts, do you get lost in that scroll? I'm a little bit burnt out with the TikTok algorithm as well. It's like as soon as you show interest in one thing, that is all it shows you. Again, with the baby example, that is all my For You page is full of right now. And as I said, I do wanna learn some things, but throw in a little bit of light entertainment for me, please. I feel like it gives you all or nothing, like a recipe, video come up the other day and I watched it. I was like, oh, that looks delicious. Saved it. And like the next 10 videos were all recipes. I'm like, <laughs> whoa, like I understand that I liked it and saved it. So you want to give me more, but can we spread it out? Even when it comes to creating TikToks, I feel like for me, I can't get all the information out that I want to get out. <laughs> within the time frame, And I know you can do the longer ones that go for three minutes, but people don't watch a three minute TikTok. They're there for quick entertainment 
and knowledge. And to me, it makes me feel like I'm not being genuine enough because I'm not letting you know everything about the product or everything about my experience with the product. And I don't know if that just comes down to me being used to YouTube life and being able to talk for as long as I want about a product. <laughs> but even though I know I'm being genuine, it still makes me feel like I'm not because I'm not giving you everything. And I think a part of that is what also makes it a bit harder for me to properly trust and connect with a TikToker over a YouTuber. Like on TikTok, if I've watched someone's video, I like them, I follow them, whatever, but I wanna go back and say, look at a video, I can't remember their handle or their name for the life of me. Like it just, it doesn't stick the same way a YouTuber's name sticks for me. So back to actually purchasing products and trusting an influencer, that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day for me, is how much do I trust this person? What have they done to show me that I can trust them and their product recommendations? I look at things like if I agree with their opinions or if I think they're a genuine person. I'd love for you to leave me a comment letting me know what are the things that make you trust or not trust an influencer. Because when it comes to not trusting, I do have a few things on my list. <laughs> One thing that really makes me not trust an influencer is whether they disclose their sponsorships properly. That to me really shows how genuine of a person you are or not. Because it's really not that hard to say when something is sponsored or gifted. And if you've got to lie about it, why are you lying about it? Another thing that kind of annoys me and makes me not trust an influencer is when they just love everything. Like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this is the best, this is amazing, I love it, I love it, I love it. And you especially see that more on TikTok rather than YouTube because of the short form style of content. But to me, I'm just like, come on. You can't love everything. Not every product has worked amazingly for you. Tell me some things that didn't work for you. Another thing is influencers who use heavy filters. And I'm not sure how much I really see it these days, especially like with Instagram video content is more the way to go now rather than photos. Like when I first got into the beauty space, Instagram was just photos and they were so heavily filtered. And I know people still put filters on their videos, like that's definitely possible, but that is something that just makes me not trust a person because it's like, again, why aren't you just being honest? Why are you pretending? I'm not saying I'm against, you know, a little light editing, but when you can tell how smoothed out the skin is, it's just like, well, that's not realistic, is it? When it comes to makeup, I like a creator that gets up real close and personal to the camera, shows me their pores, shows me their fine lines, shows how the makeup actually sits, because then you're not getting this false sense of advertising, and then say you are influenced to buy that product and it settles into your fine lines or your pores, you're not gonna be as disappointed if they just showed you the truth on how it sits on their skin. Another thing that's kind of similar to filters is if an influencer discloses whether or not they've had Botox or fillers. And I know they don't have to, but I personally like to hear it because it does make a difference to how the product sits on the skin. But before I fell pregnant, I was regularly getting Botox in my forehead. And I did that because I didn't like the way makeup settled into my fine lines. I don't have Botox at the moment. And you can see when I lift my brows, all these fine lines that I have. And when I frown, these big lines here, makeup settles into them. I personally don't like the look of it, which is why I chose to get Botox. And so say someone's reviewing a foundation and they're like, oh my God, it sits so smoothly, it's so nice, but they've had all this Botox and you haven't, and say you've got a forehead like mine, it's going to sit so differently. And again, that might make you not trust that influencer or their opinion, when really that's the truth of how it sits on their skin, they just haven't told you they've had Botox in their forehead to stop all the fine lines. So personally, I like it when they tell you that information because it's another factor when it comes to making a decision on purchasing that product for yourself. I know sponsorships are a huge issue when it comes to trusting 
an influencer, but if I'm watching someone on YouTube or even TikTok that I know, well, you know, I feel like I know, I watch their videos a lot, I trust them, I'm like, get that sponsorship. Why not? Whatever you've got to do to make that money, do it. But as long as you're being genuine. And I feel like it's usually pretty easy to tell, especially when you do know that influencer or watch them a lot, you can tell if it's a forced sponsorship or not. And say I feel like their last few sponsorships have been a bit like, mm, that doesn't really align with their content or it just doesn't really seem like them, then that's up to me as a viewer to choose whether or not I continue to watch their content, support them, skip through their sponsorships, things like that. And again, with YouTube, I feel like it's just so much easier to trust sponsored content. or well, for me and the creators that I watch anyway, over TikTok. Creating content myself, I get so many more inquiries about sponsorships for TikTok over YouTube and Instagram. It is just the place to be to earn money and get sponsorships with brands. And I don't have huge accounts with hundreds of thousands or millions of followers. So I can only imagine the kind of inquiries those people are getting. This is where I think a lot of distrust for influencers has come into play as well, because again, they're making 30 second to three minute max videos, selling you something, promoting something. How much trust have you already built for this creator before you start seeing all their sponsored content? And half the time on TikTok, it's rarely disclosed either. For me, it's just that fast paced, short form content. I find it harder to trust that influencer unless I know them. Say I've come from YouTube and then follow them on TikTok. I kind of think it's just easier for influencers to lie on TikTok when it comes to sponsorships as well. And that really sucks. Like it really, really sucks. I think a lot of it has got to do with how much is disclosed. I don't think TikTok is that strict. Like there's definitely options for you to choose paid partnership and things like that, but not everyone does it. And not everyone knows what to look out for as well. Just from experience, even with my small following compared to others, it's a quick way to make some big bucks and I can see why people might take these sponsorships and lie. To me, that's completely not worth it. Like, yeah, I'd love the money. Yeah, I'd love the opportunity to work with the brand, but if I'm gonna be lying and not being genuine to my followers, it's not worth it. Like, it's completely not worth it. It takes so long to build up trust and it can be broken so quickly. So as well as being smart about the products you purchase and consume, I think you have to be smart about the people you watch and the content that you consume. If I come across an influencer who I feel like is lying or I just, I don't know, something about them just makes them feel not trustworthy, I'm not going to follow them. I'm not going to give them my time. If they've proved to me over and over again that I can trust them, then I'm loyal to you. But if you've proven to me over and over again that I can't trust you, then I'm sorry, I'm unfollowing, I'm unsubscribing. We're just not gonna do that. And nowadays with so much content to consume, I think it is really important to be selective about who you watch because I don't know about you guys, but for me, I kind of take on their energy and their vibe. And that's because I do watch so much content. If you feel like you're not getting value out of someone's content, whether it's for learning purposes or just straight up entertainment, see you later, on to the next one. <laughs> Let me know if you think age has something to do with trust and this whole de-influencing thing as well. Because for me, the older I get and the longer I've been around YouTube and social media and the beauty community, you know, the more, the more I know. I know who to trust, I know who I wanna watch, I know what I want to get out of someone's content. And this whole de-influencing thing, especially on TikTok, do you think it does come more from the younger generation who are just entering the beauty community? They're excited, they wanna try new products, they wanna you know, buy everything, and then when it doesn't work for them, they're like, whoa, what the hell? You're a liar, you're a liar, this didn't work, that sucks. Whereas people who have been around longer I feel like we've kind of already gone through that phase. <laughs> 
maybe not been as vocal about it, I don't know. But now we know what we want. And by what we want, I mean like the products we want and know work for our skin, the people we want to watch, the value we want to get from someone's content. I don't know, at the end of the day, I do think that de-influencing is a good trend because we do consume so much, but it does come down to you and taking a look at the way you consume products. Do you think you need to stop? <laughs> do you think you need to be de-influenced a little bit more? I think it's good to kind of get you thinking about your spending habits. As I said, for me, it's about being a smart consumer because at the end of the day, all we're all doing online is giving our opinion. It's just our opinion. And you need to do with that what you will. So be a smart consumer when it comes to purchasing products and be a smart consumer when it comes to the content that you watch as well. I'd really like it if you guys would list your favorite content creators in the comments as well for me and everyone else watching to see. I'll pin a comment with some of my favorite people that I trust and really enjoy watching. I'm also open to hearing your guys' honest and constructive, keyword, constructive feedback about my channel. Cause I'm not sitting here trying to sound like holier than thou, but I do really try to do the right thing. I try to be as open and honest as possible so that you are getting all the information I think that you need when it comes to these products and reviews. I've really been trying to put more effort into my description boxes lately as well, making sure I disclose when something is gifted or if it's PR, um, that there's no obligation to post about it, making sure affiliate links are disclosed. So please let me know if you find that helpful or if there's anything I can do to improve. Like, do you want me to also say it in the video instead of just putting it in the description box? You know, do you want me to get closer to the camera so that you can see the makeup more? Like, I'm open to this constructive <laughs> feedback. All right, well, I am running out of breath and brain power, so let's wrap it up there. I hope you enjoyed watching and just listening to me ramble on about this. I hope it made sense. This baby brain has been doing wild things to me lately, so I hope some of that made sense. And I would really love to hear your opinions in the comments down below, so please get typing and let's chat about it. I didn't want to talk about the makeup I used today because we're talking about de-influencing, but I will list everything in the description box below if you want to know. Before I go, let's do a bump update. I am 33 weeks. Here she is. Look at that bump. Ay, ay, ay. That's why I'm so damn out of breath. All right, well, thank you all so much for watching. You can come follow me over on Instagram and TikTok if you aren't already, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye.